Welcome to the New Jersey Association for College Admission Counseling's Virtual College Fair. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Before we get started, just a few quick um, uh, overviews to go over. The first is that attendees are welcome and certainly encouraged to ask questions to any of the panelists at any time utilizing the Q&A feature. You can pose your question to a specific panelist or you can ask a general question of any and all of the panelists. Also just a reminder that your camera and microphone are off so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. There is one other block of sessions this evening so please feel free to sign up for them at the same website where you signed up for this session. About one week from today, recording of the session will also be available on that registration website. Without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first presenter, which will be Plymouth State University. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining. I'm going to share my screen and we'll get started on a quick presentation. So my name is Ryan Batali. I'm your admissions counselor here at Plymouth. Uh, I'm also an alum of the class of 2018. So let's get started. So where is Plymouth? We are located right in central New Hampshire, right at the base of a national forest. So as you can see in the picture, a lot to offer in the outdoors. Uh, we're two hours north of Boston and there is a bus line that actually connects you from the center of Plymouth all the way down to Boston. And if you're a New Jersey student, you can certainly take a train over to South Station in Boston and then get up there that way. Um, so just get a quick idea of how long it takes there. It's about six hours depending on where you are from New Jersey. Um, if you wanna study abroad, we are about a day away from Australia. So certainly a mountainous type campus, small New England town vibe. On campus, we have about uh, 4,000 students. 96% of those undergraduates live within a mile radius. So that means they are here on campus and it's you know pretty live. It's not a backpacking or suitcase school where kids go home on the weekend. Um, you know, contributing to that size also means really in-depth connections with your professors and the faculty. Um, we also do have a diverse population on campus um, across the globe. So we recruit from 45 states across the U.S. and 26 countries across the world. Now, how do you stay busy and active at campus? Definitely join a club or organization. So we do have a lot to offer with the outdoors, like I was saying. This is a picture here from an event called Rail Jam. Uh, this is a fully run student event. The students, uh, they do event planning, marketing. Uh, they work with local vendors to help set up food. You know, bands will play. So these are some things happening in and around campus. Um, there's a lot of clubs and organizations based around your major um, or studies as well. As you can see, American Meteorological Club, uh, and then we have a nursing association as well. As far as academics, um, most popular here at Plymouth are going to be business, criminal justice, and education. That's mainly just by student body size. Um, but Plymouth State used to be called Plymouth Teachers College. So, you know, teaching teachers is our bread and butter. Um, some standout majors that we have, music and theater performance, meteorology, uh, nursing as well. And it's okay to go undeclared. Uh, you don't need to clear a major until the end of your sophomore year. Obviously, ed adventure education is um, at your disposal too and really great given the area. So one thing within our teaching model here at Plymouth State that stands out is our clusters projects or integrated clusters. Um, and this is kind of a hands-on approach to learning and teaching. So if you're a student, you're gonna come into a class that is labeled as a clusters project um, and you'll be working with cross majors uh, with an outside vendor, outside business, what have you. Um, and it's obviously gonna be changing within the, this, this Venn diagram. Um, depending on your major, you'll fit into one of those. Um, so you'll come in taking a class called Tackling a Wicked Problem, and that really gets your gears rolling to talk about you know, big world problems. Then you'll get into the cluster projects so you can have that open mindset. And then finally, you'll get tested um, on all of your experience with the integrated capstone. Your success is our number one priority here at Plymouth. Um, we do give you a first year advisor or a student success coach when you first arrive. Um, so they'll help you with scheduling classes, um, 
I like to call them the encyclopedia for your first year of college. We do have a career development office to help with internships, resumes, cover letters, uh, connecting with alumni after graduation, global ed office to help you study abroad when things clear up. Um, and we do have accessibility services, which helps students with 504 and IEP plans. And then we are part of an organization called TRIO, which helps first generation students and uh, students who are underprivileged. So um, a lot of things to your disposal here. You just got to put the legwork in and, and walk to the offices and get some help. Now, if you're going to look for living on campus, we do offer housing all four years at Plymouth. There are six first year halls. Um, and three sophomore residential options. So there's um, some suite style living and there's some campus apartments. And then senior year, we have the privilege of letting students move off campus, which uh, like I was saying, is all within a mile radius. So definitely a, a tight knit community. Now, if you're looking for athletics, we have 25 NCAA division three teams. Um, certainly can get you trying out for one as it is division three, um, but we do talk with the coaches here and. Uh, have recruits that coming in as well. So club sports is might be a little bit more of a laid back, but you still get to travel. Um, there's ultimate frisbee, men and women's rugby, and then maybe there's intramural sports where you're just looking to have some fun on campus. Um, and like I was saying, we do have a lot with the outdoors. We have about four local ski mountains uh, within 30 minutes of campus, and we vote each year as a student body, uh, and it's usually five dollars a ski pass. So a killer deal, um, and then free discounted and free lessons, uh, discounted lessons, discounted equipment. Um, we have an outdoor center as well. So camping, hiking, whatever it is, it's all there for you. How do you apply to Plymouth? We are through the Common App, which requires a fee. If you talk to me today, um, I will waive that fee for you. And then we do have a Panther application on our website as well. Now, what do we look for in our students? We wanna see the basic CP classes. Um, a 3.0 GPA is typically what we see here at Plymouth. Some deadlines here to focus on. FAFSA would be the huge one I would recommend paying attention to if you are a junior. Um, April 1st, we actually have pushed that forward here at Plymouth for this year, given the, the current state of the world. Average costs in of attendance. This is all before any sort of financial aid. We do merit scholarship here at Plymouth. So based on your GPA, um, we will, you know, lock you up into one of these categories. And we are rolling admissions, so no real deadlines. And this could help you out in the future. So I'm just going to quickly put up my contact information. So again, my name is Ryan Battaglia. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions here for New Jersey, New York, um, a lot of other areas in the US too, but you know, you can call or text me at that number or shoot me an email, happy to help. Thank you very much, Plymouth State. Uh, moving on to our next presenter this evening, uh, we have Purchase College. Cool. Hi, folks. Thank you, Christopher and Ryan. Actually, Purchase is the Panther, too. So I think we're uh, mascot siblings. And my, hi, everyone. My name is Julian. I'm an admissions counselor at Purchase. I'm also an alum. I actually grew up in Somerset County, New Jersey. So hello to any uh, Plainfield area folks. I, um, I am an alum of our painting and drawing program, and I'm happy to talk with you all about what Purchase has to offer. So. I, I'm trying out something where you see the little QR code in the middle of the screen. You're able to scan that and get to relevant info that's on the slide. So give that a try. Um, so purchase is a lot of things and I have five minutes to tell you about it. So purchase is broadly a liberal arts and science institution. We're part of the SUNY system, which is the State University of New York, the largest public college network in the US made of over 60 different campuses. Purchase is unique in that we were founded with the intention of bringing together traditional academic pursuits, biology, psychology being our top majors, and bringing those uh, disciplines right alongside conservatory style training in the visual and performing arts. For that reason, we're known as the cultural gem of the SUNY system. And, um, and we might have a reputation of, of being an art school, and uh, definitely for good reason, uh, but 
60% of our 4,000 students on a given year are historians, philosophers, political scientists, environmental activists. Um, here's a shot of our campus. It's uh, 500 acres of nicely um, pristine and preserved greenery set in ultra suburban Westchester County. So we're just about a 35 minute train ride north of New York City, uh, right across the Tappan Zee Bridge. So very accessible to New Jersey. And this map will show you that 10 minutes in either direction from our campus, you can use our free bus shuttle or bring your own car if you want uh, to get to two different train stations, both of which have a direct line into Grand Central Manhattan. Um, so lots of opportunity there. Um, I don't think I have to go into much depth about any type of arts, cultural, in business internship job opportunities that this proximity to New York affords our students. And definitely it, then students get to benefit from living in the country, having the city in their backyard. Um, purchase is pretty worldwide too. We have about 20 different study away opportunities. If you don't like any of our options, uh, you have the SUNY network at your disposal, over 600 different study away opportunities where you can use your same financial aid that you have at purchase benefit from the same tuition rate and choose a different place to go to. Uh, purchase really attracts creative, uh, open-minded, um, collaborative people, people that want to have their time at college mean something to, to, to really shake and move the space that's around them. Um, so those are the type of students that we, we look at in our holistic admissions approach. Um, in terms of academic rigor, we're able to provide a very intimate student to faculty ratio on average 14 students to one faculty member. This is important because uh, planning up to your senior year, your, um, the core curriculum is going to give you this broad liberal arts exposure, giving you eight different subject areas to gain competency in. But planning towards your senior year, you're going to spend your final year at Purchase, last two semesters, in an independent study project of your choosing, and your faculty are there guiding you through it. Um, so uh, that kind of summarizes like the type of academic rigor that we're able to provide our students. A broad liberal arts education is really meant to create engaged, informed citizens. And we do that here with very open dialogue, safe spaces to have difficult conversations. Um, so School of Liberal Arts and Sciences, I'll just show you all of our majors, um, a lot more to read about on our webpage. Uh, yes, yeah, so I mentioned biology being one of our top majors, psychology. 84% of our pre-med students get into their first choice medical school, if you're looking at that on your horizon. School of Humanities, super cross-pollinating majors where you can uh, try out a lot of different things. Coming in undeclared, there's no better place to be an undeclared than a liberal arts and science institution like Purchase. Uh, on this slide, we have our, our first BFA, film, and, uh, film BFA being a program that requires a portfolio for entry. Um, here are the other BFA, the fine arts, visual arts performing programs, where um, the little QR code will take you to the webpage where you can read about the specific talent screenings for these programs. School of Art and Design, all of these programs have amazing facilities and Conservatory of Dance has temperature controlled, uh, Marley Floor dance studios. Um, Conservatory Music is a huge boat of a building, over 70 practice rooms, uh, five different recording studios, uh, Grammy award-winning faculty teaching our students. Uh, theater arts has acting as a BFA, which is training for both stage and screen. It's not um, musical theater, it's dramatic or comedic performances. And um, if you want more of a traditional uh, college experience, possibly theater and performance is a better fit for you. Uh, yeah, so check out this link to find out about all the audition requirements. And to wrap up, let's see what else I got for you. Uh, in terms of value, being out of state, you'd be surprised. These numbers compare um, pretty competitively to looking at, say, Rutgers if we're in state. So the sticker price before financial aid, just under 33 for the year. Uh, a lot of fun events, a lot of cultural uh, uniqueness at purchase that I'd love to tell you more about in a future information session. Let me get you to this slide where you can see what those opportunities are. Yeah, so scan that QR code, it'll take you to our virtual visit webpage. Uh, thank you, folks. Thank you very much, Purchase. 
Um, up next will be Quinnipiac University. Uh, you're on mute there, Adam. No longer muted. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so my name is Adam Cooper Smith. I am the assistant director of admissions for the northern half of New Jersey. I am um, a two time alumni of uh, Quinnipiac, as well as an alumni of Randolph High School right here in Morris County, New Jersey. Um, so just wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, who we are at QU and what we got going on for us. Um, so we have three different campuses, one being our Mount Carmel, um, which is where all of our first and second year students are going to live. Um, our North Haven campus, which is actually the former um, world headquarters for Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, as well as, um, excuse me, it, as well as a few other um, insurance firms. Um, but we took that over and it houses now our med school and our law school. And then we have our York Hill campus, um, which is going to be for our juniors and seniors, has zero classes on it and also hosts our athletic events. So uh, in terms of the total university, uh, we are right around 10,000 total students, 7,000 undergrad, 3,000 grad. Average class size is going to be right around 24. Student to teacher ratio is going to be 16 to 1. So you're going to have those small class sizes. I know from my own personal experience, I still have a group chat with a ton of my professors from when I was a student here. Um, so they are really there for you to exploit. Um, get to know your professors. They want to get to know you. They're going to go out of their way to make sure that you're successful. Now, outside the classroom, we have close to 150 different clubs and organizations, 21 D1 sports. Um, we have club sports, we have um, intramurals. So there's tons and tons of things for students to get involved with. We have large scale community service events, philanthropy events. Um, we have fraternity and sorority life on campus. So really anything you wanna get involved with, you have the opportunity to do so. Every single student here also has the opportunity to have their own television broadcast, their own radio show, their own podcasts. Um, so if you are interested in media, we have a phenomenal um, outlet for you as well. Now, we have close to 60 different majors, 50 different minors, and 17 dual degree programs across nine different schools, which includes our College of Arts and Sciences, School of Business, Communications, educa uh, Education, Engineering, Health Sciences, Law, Nursing, and Medicine. Uh, and we do have quite a large number of dual degree programs. Now, when I talk about dual degree programs, what I mean are uh, programs where you can come out with both your bachelor's as well as your master's degree in an accelerated period of time. So you can come out um, in four years, um, in some cases with both your bachelor's and your master's degree. This is just an example of some of the companies that we uh, partner with to uh, pair our students off for internships. Um, some great companies, including the New York Yankees, Nickelodeon, Pepsi, um, Enterprise, Bloomberg, the big four. Um, we are the direct middle point between Boston and Manhattan. So you have an opportunity to um, intern in both major cities as well as throughout Connecticut and New Jersey. Now, just some key dates for students to understand. Um, our early decision deadline is going to be November 1st. Uh, an early decision is going to be our binding option. So um, students can uh, sign a contract with yourself, parent or guardian, as well as a school counselor stating that um, you understand if you're admitted to the university, that's where you're going. I only recommend this for students who know they want to come to Quinnipiac and can't see themselves anywhere else. Um, after that, we have our early action deadline, which is November 15th. That's also um, our preferred deadline for all of our health science and nursing programs. Uh, and then we have our early action two deadline, which is January 1st, and then regular admission being February 1st. Now, how to apply? We are a common app school, so all you have to do is check us off the list, um, and then you are good to go. We don't have any um, further essays. It's just the common app essay. Um, and what we are going to require from you is your uh, transcript, two to three letters of recommendation, and we are test optional for most of our programs. Um, if you are thinking about going into physician's assistant um, or our accelerated three plus three law program, uh, then we are going to require a score. But 
If you are unable to take an SAT or an ACT, um, we will be able to waive that on your transcript. Now, that is pretty much Quinnipiac in a nutshell. Um, if you do have any questions, this is my email address. You can always feel free to reach out. Um, in all likelihood, it's either going to be me or my colleague, Katie Strong, who is, uh, who is your counselor. So feel free to use us. Uh, I'm always here to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much, Quinnipiac. Um, as we move into the second half of our presentations this evening, just a quick reminder to all of our attendees, uh, you are certainly welcome and encouraged to ask questions to any of our panelists at any time utilizing the Q&A feature. Uh, but up next this evening is Ramapo College of New Jersey. Hi, everyone. Uh, let me go ahead and get my screen shared. Give me just one moment. Bear with me. Okay. Um, my name is Kerry. I'm an admissions counselor at Ramapo College. I'm also an alum of Ramapo too. I studied marketing and anthropology during my time there. Uh, primarily, I work with all out-of-state and international students, but I also work uh, with parts of Bergen County as well too. So Ramapo is located in northern New Jersey. We're inside Bergen County. Uh, we're on about 300 acres of land right next to the Ramapo Mountains. We're yeah. on a suburban campus. And uh, we're only about 45 minutes from New York City. So on average, we have about 6,000 undergraduate students on campus. And we do have a small class size of about 21 students and a 16 to one faculty to student, I'm sorry, student to faculty ratio. We are the smallest four-year public college in New Jersey, but we are not too big, we're not too small, we're, we're medium on average. So we have over 100 different majors, minors, and concentrations to choose from within our five academic schools. We have the Annisfield School of Business, School of Contemporary Arts, Humanities and Global Studies, Social Science and Human Services, Theoretical and Applied Science. So inside these five academic schools, we have some pretty popular programs, which include nursing and biology, communications and music production, psychology and social work, management and accounting and education. We also offer articulated programs with outside institutions. So these are early acceptance programs that you can apply to as a prospective student. Uh, we are test optional, but these programs still require a SAT or ACT score due to the requirements of the school. We also offer multiple graduate programs as well as four plus one programs. So with the four plus one programs, you're able to obtain your bachelor's and your master's degree within five years of study. We offer uh, multiple different things on campus, including a college honors program, which includes honors courses, a senior research project, as well as career services. Uh, our career center uh, assists you with obtaining an internship as well as a job post-graduation. We do offer over 1,000 internships in New York City, and on average, we have about 300 employers that visit campus every year. This year, that is virtual due to the pandemic, but we also offer over 500 different study and intern abroad programs in 60 different countries. A little bit about our residence, residence life on campus. We offer five suite style residence halls. All of them are suite style, so there's no communal bathrooms. We have two apartment complexes on campus. All of these residence halls are a close academic, um, I'm sorry, close walk to the academic complexes. And you can have your car on campus as a first year student, and you can even pick your own roommates. So there's so many different ways to get involved in campus, whether it's one of our student clubs or organizations, fraternity or sorority, professional honor society, volunteer opportunities. And then we also have 18 division three athletic teams. Among those athletic teams, we also offer club and intramural sports too. There are so many different ways that you can apply. You can use the Ramapo College application, the Common App or the Coalition App. We require your application for admission, your high school transcript, on average, we look for about a 3.4 on a 4.0 scale. Uh, two letters of recommendation are preferred, but only one is required. And again, like I mentioned, Ramapo is test optional for the 2021-2022 admission cycle, but it's still required for the joint programs that I mentioned earlier. 
So Ramapo is a very affordable college. The average tuition increase is only about 1.5% in the uh, past five years. We do offer merit-based scholarship. Make sure that you submit your application by December 15th in order to be considered. There's two types of scholarship that we offer, the presidential and the deans. And then we also offer multiple scholarship opportunities for continuing students. So that's pretty much Ramapo in a nutshell. If you do have any questions, you can always contact me by email, by phone, or by text. You can also visit this website, ramapo.edu slash learn. It's our new interactive website. So you can register for uh, some of our Tuesday topics, and then you can also register for a campus tour and learn more about Ramapo College. So if you have any questions, you can contact me by any of these ways, or you can send me a chat as well too. Thank you very much, Ramapo College. Uh, moving on, uh, up next we have Randolph College. You might be on mute there, Randolph. So sorry, can you see me now? <laughs> uh, yes, you're good. Gotcha. Thanks. Sorry about that. So thank you, everyone. My name is Corey Brown. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions at Randolph College. We are located in Lynch, Lynchburg, Virginia. Um, so a little further away than what you guys are, I'm sure, are accustomed to, but um, we do have some things for some students out of states for sure. Um, so once again, located in Lynchburg, Virginia, we were formerly known as Randolph Macon's Women's College up until 2007 when the school went co-ed um, and we dropped the making. So now we are what you see as Randolph College. Um, so at Randolph, we have 33 majors, 43 minors, a student faculty ratio of nine to one um, and forgive that number of 11, but an average class size of 13. Uh, we have five free pre-professional programs and a couple dual degree majors, the key one being um, engineering. Uh, students will have a three two engineering um, experience where they can go into any form of engineering that they would like, um, and we will help them get hands-on um, experience inside and outside the classroom. Um, but like I said, graduate with us in three years and then move on to one of our partnering schools, one being UVA, um, University of Virginia, and the other is WashU of St. Louis, where students will move on to their second degree um, in the five-year program. But students also have the option to finish school with us in four years before moving to the partnering program as well. You are guaranteed admissions into those programs uh, with a 3.3 in a major. We also have, and now formally, so forgive that too, but there are now three graduate programs, creative writing. Um, uh, we have coaching and leadership in sports, and we also have an education master's program as well. Uh, we have faculty and staff, um, they are probably probably be the key thing here on campus. Uh, rank 18th most accessible professors in the nation. Um, and they continue to be that uh, for the, I think this was actually the third consecutive year. Um, so they're on campus, they live around within 20 minutes of campus, responsive to emails and things like that. So students are able to build relationships with their professors um, here at Randolph. Um, just a little bit of our study abroad opportunities. So students will have chances to go for spring break trips, semester length trips, full year trips, or even just summer excursions for two to four weeks over the summer. Um, here you will see a list of different countries and some different areas where students have studied abroad, but what you see is not what we're limited to. Uh, students can go pretty much anywhere as long as we're able to background check it and make sure it's feasible for a student. France, Greece, Spain, China, Bulgaria, Jamaica, Honduras, and several other locations. Um, honestly, every student that has gone on that I have talked to has enjoyed their experience thoroughly. Um, just a little bit about some of our internships and academic opportunities. Um, so summer research programs are big for students here. Uh, they'll stay on campus and work with their professors on any type of research that they are uh, interested in getting involved with some from scratch. So sometimes they'll be from their very own um, base of uh, research. And then sometimes they're jumping in with professors on current research that professors are working on. 
uh, we have what we call a RISE grant. So a RISE grant is a $2,000 scholarship that students can apply to their studies. So we've had students use it to go study abroad, to go to conventions in different states and different areas. Um, we've had students buy a completely new laptop for their research purposes. So it's many different opportunities that students are uh, able to excel in their uh, research and things like that in their studies with that Jolly Mini grant. Uh, we are connected with the National Gallery in London. Uh, so we will sometimes our school, we have a very own museum on campus. Um, so we will trade sometimes artwork with them. We will send students over to study abroad and work and internship and things like that. So very good. So anybody that's involved in art or looking for art programs, um, I think that will be a pretty, pretty uh, beneficial program for you to jump into here at Randolph. Um, and actually one of the students here at the bottom right that you see picture was Mitch. Um, he went and interned with the Washington Redskins the summer going into his senior year working in their front office. Um, the following summer after graduation, he got a job with the Miami Dolphins. Um, so internships and research, like I said, that hands on activity is something that we look for uh, to con connect students with uh, as soon as they are possibly and willing to. Uh, the Randolph plan. So as a student coming into Randolph, um, sometimes it can be scary thinking about what you're going to do and where you're going to be and how you're going to attain um, your degree. Uh, but students come in and they sit down with their academic advisor from day one um, and you go over what you know your interests are, what you're looking to do, what your goals are and things like that. From that, your advisor is learning more about you um, and then you're looking at each semester that you have at Randolph. So from your freshman to your senior year and you're adding in, plugging in, taking out courses just based off your interests, which you've taken before, um, what you've found that you have a, a new discovery and in interest and things like that. Uh, so, but that'll also keep you on top of your credits earned, what you've taken and what courses that you need to take in order to fulfill requirements. Um, so that goes a long way. And the only time you change your advisor um, is when you commit to a program. Um, so once you declare your major, uh, but that that Randolph plan is with you each time you go to advisor that way, like I said, you're able to keep track of everything that you're doing on campus. Um, honor code. So at Randolph, we are big on our honor code. Uh, we students pledge that uh, we actually have our self scheduled exams, which is a big hit for our students. Students will literally come to campus, uh, go through their courses, and then during the exam period, uh, for, so it's typically Monday through Friday, students will go through an exam period um, of self-scheduled times. Now, the times will be set up already, but you'll be able to pick and choose when you go to those times. So please keep that in mind. That is a big hit on our campus. Um, academic services here, writing labs, tutoring at a student's will, contact is there as you see it, um, but that is up to a student's discretion. Um, so just some basic stuff here, as you see, as far as uh, application, uh, we are test optional for now um, in the COVID setting. Um, all we request are transcripts and that'll complete your app here with us at Randolph. Um, and the biggest deadline is obviously the May 1st deadline, uh, but we are rolling admission. So once we get everything from you, typically takes about two weeks to get back to you. And please, please, please fill out your FAFSA. FAFSA code is 003734. financial aid and just some contact info. And please contact me at cbrown at randolphcollege.edu. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much, Randolph College. Um, and our final presenter this evening is Reed College. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me and for joining in. Um, I'm actually not going to do a presentation. I'm just going to, to chat at you for about five minutes or so. Um, and I'm going to start by just putting in some contact information into the chat. Um, you know, keep that in mind. And of course, feel free to reach out anytime. Um, my name is Miranda, and I'm an admission counselor here at Reed College. I am also a Reed alum. Um, I graduated last year uh, with a degree in political science. Um, so some basics about Reed, we are a small liberal arts college, we have about 1400 students in our student body. Um, and we are actually quite on the opposite side of um, the country from the rest of our visitors tonight, we are in Portland, Oregon. Um, I myself grew up in New York, so I'm happy to chat about kind of how you know what that feels like to go to college so far away and that kind of east to west coast transition. 
Um, Portland is part of the Pacific Northwest region of the country. And so it's a really beautiful balance between you have city life and, you know, a lot of access to jobs and opportunities that you might get living in a city. Um, but you also have a lot of access to the outdoors and to nature. Um, Reed itself is located right in the middle of the coast and the mountains, about an hour from each. And so you'll get a lot of access to different um, landscapes, climates, outdoors activities, um, things like that. And kind of a fun fact is that we're actually on average the college that students travel the farthest to attend. Um, so we have all 50 states represented in our student body, as well as about 11% of our student body coming um, from abroad. So international students make up a pretty robust part of our community as well. Um, I'm going to just bring you through really briefly the kind of academic journey that you'll take at Reed um, before going into some more detail. Um, so in your first year, you'll take a class called Humanities 110. Um, this is our only required course you'll take your whole time at Reed. So it'll be the only time that you're in a class with your entire freshman year. Um, it's a great chance to kind of make friends and build a bit of class identity, um, as well as just get used to academics at Reed. And Humanities 110 comes in three different parts. So you'll have lecture, conference, and then something called paper conference. Uh, your lectures will be given by, by professors on a rotating basis. So it's a very interdisciplinary class and you'll get to have kind of face time and access to professors from a wide variety of departments. So you might have a lecture from an art historian on Wednesday, uh, from a political scientist on Friday, and from a you know sociologist on the following Monday. Um, in addition to that, you'll have conference. Our average class size is about 15 students. And so you'll have that broken into a smaller group. Um, and that's what the majority of your classes at Reed will look like, uh, kind of roundtable discussion-based learning, um, a lot of research built into our learning programs and a lot of interdisciplinary approaches. Um, and then that third component of Hume 110 is your paper conferences. Uh, we are a pretty writing intensive school and we wanna really set up our freshmen for success, getting used to meeting with their professors, getting used to talking about their writing. Um, and so each time you write an essay in that class, you will meet one-on-one -on -one with your professor to really go over your writing process and kind of your, your questions, your arguments, all of that. Um, on the opposite end of your academic experience at Reed in your final year is your senior thesis. And this is the second required thing that you'll do as a graduating Reed student. Um, your senior thesis is essentially a year long research project that you undertake independently with the guidance of an advisor. Um, I wrote my senior thesis on early education policy and universal preschool in three key states across the country. Um, so, for example, that's just an example, but you can really, you know, come up with your project, your question, whatever it is that interests you, and you'll work with a professor um, who kind of knows more about that field and can kind of work as your academic guide in your final year at Reed. Um, so that's a really brief, you know, trajectory of your time at Reed um, and kind of the key moments in the first year and the last year. Um, something that I really like to provide for, for students, I know, um, you know, visiting right now is, is challenging um, and there's a lot of information on our website that I'll, I'll point you to at the end. Um, but something that I really like to provide for people is just kind of how I define the Reed community and, and Reed as a school. And I think that it really comes in two key parts. Um, the first being this intellectual curiosity and the second being our honor principle. Um, so when I say intellectual curiosity, I don't necessarily just mean that our students are, you know, always in the library, always in classes. Um, while that is probably true for some of our students, really what I mean is that most of our community members here are really curious about the world. They want to know more. They want to sit in their classroom for an hour after class and talk to their friends about their reading. They want to go to their professor's office hours. They want to do, you know, independent research projects, whatever it is. Um, so, you know, some curiosity about the world. It doesn't even need to be your academic passion. It can be your hobby, your craft, your art, whatever it might be. Um, the second part that I think is, you know, equally important is our honor principle. Our honor principle is how we govern and self-govern our community at Reed. Every single community member who joins into the Reed world um, is kind of bound by the honor principle. So it's not just something that our administration comes up with and gives our students. It's all the way from our students to our faculty, staff, alum, presidents. Um, and so it's really um, this unique idea that we ask our Reed community to think about their impact on the world and those around them. So it's not something that's been written down, um, nor will it ever be written down. It's instead a conversation that happens on campus that reflects the interests of the people there. Um, and is really this idea that you should think about and care about your impact on yourself, your friends, your world around you, your environment, all of that. Um, so it means that our students have a lot of autonomy and that there's a lot of mutual respect and trust between the administration and our students, our staff or faculty, all of that. 
Um, so a little bit quickly on financial aid and uh, admission at Reed, we accept the Common App or the Coalition App. Um, we don't have a preference between either and we don't have an application fee on either platform. Um, we are actually test blind for the next upcoming admission cycle. Um, so even if you are able to take an ACT or SAT score, um, even if you send it to us, we won't actually look at it in your evaluation process. So we are 100% test blind. Um, in terms of financial aid, we are committed to meeting 100% of demonstrated need. And so we require both the FAFSA and the CSS profile. Um, our financial aid process is entirely need-based. So all of our financial aid money is going towards students who need it the most. Um, so that's just something really important to keep in mind if you are starting to look into scholarships and things like that. Um, so again, I put the contact information in the in the chat bar. Uh, feel free to ask any questions now or always use, utilize my email. Um, and that second email in the chat box, writerreedy at read.edu is a really great resource that I would encourage you to use. It'll actually connect you with current Reed students who work in the admission office. And so if you wanna chat with a biology major, if you wanna to talk to somebody from the East Coast, if you wanna to talk to somebody, you know, how Reed did in COVID and you want that current student perspective, um, it's a really great resource and our students absolutely love talking to our prosties. So please feel free to utilize either of those emails or do a virtual visit with us. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Reed, and thank you to all of our presenters this evening. We do have a few minutes remaining, so I would encourage our attendees to send through any additional questions you may have with the Q&A feature. Uh, while we're waiting to see what questions may come in, uh, perhaps I could pose a question to you all, and we can go around in the same order and answer it. Um, either what's one piece of advice you have for a student going through the college search process, or what's your favorite event or tradition on campus? And we will start with uh, Plymouth State. I'd say our biggest event, most, uh, I guess, coolest event on campus is going to be Ski Day. So it's a free day for faculty and staff to take off um, and they can go to the mountain. So it's a good way for the campus to communicate and socialize, um, but also using that outdoor, um, you know, that backyard to our advantage. So, yeah. Hey, right. thank you. Purchase. Thanks. Um, I guess advice for now, for this upcoming year in this pandemic life we're living is to stay in good contact with places you're interested in and be mindful of deadlines, even though there might be some grace period, you still want to be respectful of, of published deadlines. Um, and then I guess fa favorite, um, favorite event on campus, it would have to be fall ball. So it's a, it's a night of drag performances. We have some, I don't know if anyone watches RuPaul's Drag Race, but we have some alum that have gone on to that show. And so fall ball is just a night of drag performances on campus, off campus performance performers and, uh, it's just the next day you're coughing up glitter. Great, thank you. Quinnipiac? So biggest piece of advice I can give is um, no matter where you go, whether it be Quinnipiac or any of my uh, phenomenal colleagues, schools, or anywhere across the country, um, is always going to with an open mind. Um, college is definitely something that is going to change your life for the best. Um, so as long as you don't have any expectations, which is so easy to say and very, very difficult to actually put into, put into action, uh, you're going to have an awesome time. Uh, so just make sure you're going in with an open mind, have a lot of fun, um, and learn a lot. Uh, and then I would say the biggest event that we have on campus is so big that our student marketing department came up with a really creative name for it. Uh, it's such a big event that they called it the big event. Um, so the big event is a community service project where we go all over our backyard of uh, New Haven and Hamden, um, and we partner with a ton of different local charities. Um, you might be doing uh, park cleanup or working with boys and girls clubs. Every year that I did it, I was involved with, a, um, with an animal shelter, so I just got to pet puppies all day. So if you like petting puppies, definitely come to Quinnipiac. It's a great spot for you. Uh, but I would say, yeah, our biggest event is the big event. Great, thank you. Ramapo? So we actually have an arching ceremony, which I personally enjoyed as a student at Ramapo. And what it is during welcome week, the whole class lines up and you walk through the arch and then you shake the president's hand. And then during graduation, you do the same thing, but in reverse. 
And it basically outlined your entire journey at Ramapo College. And you have family members that are standing by watching you during this ceremony. And it's a really important time just basically demonstrating your entire journey over your four years. Okay, thank you. Randolph? Um, best advice I would say to you students are, um, and I, and I want to actually reiterate something else that he said, but to keep an open mind, um, talk to your counselors. If you, if you have people you've been in touch with, use them for all the knowledge, ask as many questions as you possibly can, um, to figure out where your home will be. Um, and to make sure you visit, uh, visit, visit, visit. I know with this climate, it's a lot harder right now. Um, but get out and visit, man, get out and visit as many schools as you possibly can. Um, and, and, and have a couple in your, in your mind that maybe be a little further away, even if you don't think you will go away from home, your home state, uh, visit some places that are out of state um, and, and keep those places in mind. Um, and then as far as traditions or something on campus, um, I would say probably my favorite is the seafood fest that we do <laughs> uh, the last Friday of classes uh, during the school year. Um, crab legs and shrimp in the dining hall. I'm someone who loves to eat, so that, that, that fit me. <laughs> I haven't had dinner yet. You're making me hungry. Read. Yeah, my favorite tradition while I was a student at Reed um, was something that we have called student union dances. They happen about twice a month um, and we have a open kind of loft space in the middle of our campus called the student union. And each Saturday night, there's a dance um, kind of dedicated to a different musical group. Um, so we have some that are traditions. We have like a Daft Punk ball, Talking Heads, LCD Sound System, Britney Spears, things like that. Um, but you can also host your own. And so if you have an artist or a band that you really love, you can you know, have a night dedicated to their music. Um, Reedy's love getting dressed up. So you'll see a lot of really fun costumes and you just get to dance the night away. And it's a really kind of fun way to spend a night on your weekend and then be able to just, you know, walk 10 feet back to your dorm room. Um, in terms of advice that I would give for applicants and things like that, uh, it sounds, you know, expected, but definitely to just be true to who you are. I think as admission counselors, it's really fun to read an essay that's about something that you can tell this the student is really genuinely passionate about um, versus reading an essay that you think you know this person is writing something they think sounds impressive um, for us you know we get a page to learn about you and so having that page be uh, something that's genuinely interesting and, and something that really does excite you and um, you know keep capture your interest I think uh, making sure that you you share that with us is always a really fun fun thing to read Thank you very much, Reed, and thank you to all of our presenters this evening for sharing information about your schools. Uh, before we sign off, just a few quick reminders. Uh, when you close this window, you will receive a very quick four-question survey that we ask you to take a minute and complete. And again, there is one other block of sessions this evening, so please feel, sign feel free to sign up for that. And about one week from today, a recording of the session will also be available. Uh, but thank you again, and good luck to everybody in your college search. Have a great night. Good luck, everyone.